Good day! Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Friday, September 3, 2021. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio has revealed that Senators Christopher Lawrence Bongo and Sherwin Gachalian personally expressed their offer to be her running mate should she run for the presidency in the 2022 national elections. Duterte Carpio also denied the claim of her father, President Rodrigo Duterte, that Senator Maria Imelda Josefa Aimi Marcos visited her in Davao City to also offer to be her vice presidential bet. Early in August, the faction in the ruling Partido Democratico Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban, led by Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi, endorsed Go as the party's standard bearer and President Duterte as his running mate. Duterte has already confirmed he wants to run for vice president while Go has rejected the offer to be PDP Laban's presidential candidate. Duterte Carpio has yet to announce whether she is joining next year's presidential derby. She said common friends had told her that former Defense Secretary Gilbert Kibo Chodoro also wants to be her running mate. And there are groups that want either House Majority Leader Martin Romaldez or Senator Juan Edgardo Sonia Angara to be her partner in next year's polls, she said. Meanwhile, former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. admitted he was considering running for president next year amid the support he was receiving from some sectors and political groups. Marcos confirmed he was talking to both factions of the ruling PDP Laban since he has friends from both sides. But everything is very fluid, he said on Wednesday evening during a forum organized by the Anvil Business Club. He was asked to react to a report that some political parties were willing to support him even if he decides to run for the presidency. These parties, however, said they will withdraw their support if he slides down to the vice president position. Presidential advisor for entrepreneurship Jose Maria Joy Concepcion III on Thursday proposed bakuna or vaccine bubbles in cities in the national capital region that have achieved high vaccination rates. Concepcion, also the founder of Go Negocio, said testing the concept in cities with high vaccination rates could help solve the problem of how to reopen the economy safely while simultaneously boosting the public's confidence in vaccination. The Philippines is negotiating with four drug manufacturers for booster shots against COVID-19 that may be supplied as early as the first quarter of 2022, vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. said on Thursday. Galvez made the statement as he revealed that China's Sinovac Biotech wanted to donate 500,000 booster shots to Filipino health workers. He said the government has set aside 45 billion pesos for the possible purchase of booster shots. For the meantime, Galvez is waiting for guidance from the World Health Organization, the Department of Health, the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group, and the vaccine expert panels regarding the administration of booster shots. The WHO has rolled out the need for booster shots from now, since the world's most vulnerable people have to be fully vaccinated first. The reproduction number in the National Capital Region, or NCR, has gone down, but case numbers remain high according to the Okta research. The region's R0 is now at a manageable 1.39, but the daily case average for the August 26 to September 1 period was 4,637, up by 12% from the 4,147 cases on August 19 to 25. Okta expects the reproduction number to drop below 1 by the third week of September and the daily case load to keep rising but at a slower rate. President Rodrigo Duterte can run for vice president next year even if he does not have a running mate, Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo said on Thursday. The PDP Laban faction led by Secretary Alfonso Cusi had endorsed the Go-Duterte tandem, but the senator declined the offer. The president, however, accepted the nomination. Topping business, the Philippine peso experienced its strongest day in a one-week period after returning to 49 pesos for a dollar territory on Wednesday. After opening at 50 pesos and 4 centavos to a dollar, the local unit climbed 24 centavos to 49 pesos and 82 centavos to a dollar. It hasn't reached this level since August 31 when it closed at 49 pesos and 76 centavos to a dollar. The peso's rise, according to Japan-based MUFG Bank Limited, is expected to be short as risk attitudes are likely to remain dragged down by COVID-19 Delta variant fears. In sports, Team Philippines looks to finish its campaign at the Tokyo Paralympics in a strong fashion on Friday. Still without a medal in the Games, the country leans on swimmer Gary Behino and wheelchair racer Gerald Mangliwan to make the podium on Friday. Behino plunges into action first as he swims in lane 1 of heat 2 in the 100m backstroke S6 at 8.23am at the Tokyo Aquatic Center. Behino previously competed in the 200m individual medley SM6, 50m butterfly S6, and 400m freestyle S6 events where he finished at 17th, 14th, and 13th places respectively. Mangliwan, on the other hand, competes in the men's 100m T52 final round at 10.07am at the Tokyo Olympic Stadium. Rigoberto Tiglao and Ruben Torres are today's front-page columnists. 
Tiglao talks about the personal protective equipment issue, while Torres calls out the corruption by the pharmaceutical company Pharmaly. Today's editorial calls for a granular lockdowns in the country amid an increase of COVID-19 cases. Read a full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and keep up with the Times. On behalf of the Manila Times, this is Arik John C. Kuo reporting. Have a safe Friday ahead.